Hey, welcome back to Frank's World TV special build 2013 coverage day two. So I'm here today at build uh, where we had a new numerous announcements uh, about Windows Azure and some of the exciting things that are going on in that space. Uh, we also had some announcements regarding uh, Windows uh, development in general uh, as well as WPF. We actually saw some WPF and XAML love today, which is very reassuring uh, through my inner Silverlight child. So uh, without further ado, I will hand it over to fellow developer evangelist Jennifer Marsman to explain some of the more announcements that have been made at Build 2013. Hi, my name is Jennifer Marsman and I am live from the Build 2013 conference out in San Francisco. And I am standing right by the Windows Store booth. And so there's a lot of excitement that has come out around Windows Store um, at Build this year. Uh, we've had announcements that there's going to be a lot of different things on the app listing page. For example, um, you will get uh, featured recommendations, picks for you. So if you liked Twilight, maybe you would also love, what else? What would be a good thing for a Twilight lover? I don't know. What are those other vampire diaries? Okay. <laughs> You know better than I do. So great personalized recommendations on apps, of course, apps that you might love in the Windows Store. Now, another great thing you can see, especially for developers, is if you can see other apps published by that developer. So if I uh, find an app that I really love and it was put out by a developer, I can see other um, apps that those developers have published. So they're making it a lot easier to do that as well. Um, apps also auto-update, which is a great feature. So the user doesn't have to go and manually update the application anymore updates will be automatically downloaded. Also great for developers is the fact that developers can now download all of their analytics data. So all of the data about my applications in the store, I can download and analyze and uh, play with offline, which is great. One other thing that has been lifted is the fact that previously, uh, when a user downloaded an app, they could install it onto five devices, but there was a five device limit that was enforced. Now, um, after Windows 8.1, there will no longer be a five device limit. You can go on um, and, and install it on as many devices as you want, so that's pretty cool. A lot of other great improvements, um, increased support for consumables and a lot of other great stuff. So I'm very excited to see the apps that uh, new developers will be building for the Windows 8.1 store. Thanks, Jennifer. So while walking around the big room, uh, basically the expo floor today, uh, I had the chance to bump into some very interesting people. Uh, I had a chance to uh, talk to Josh Holmes. Hi, I'm Josh Holmes. Uh, you can find me uh, uh, at Josh Holmes on Twitter or joshholmes.com on, uh, online. Uh, or you can uh, email me at josh.holmes at microsoft.com. And I'm on the IE team. So, uh, so I'm actually the IE dev relations guy. Uh, used to work with, uh, with Frank here um, uh, quite heavily in the field. Uh, back when I was a, a field DE. Um, but so what I'm doing on the IE team is that I work with uh, with content and our event plan for around the world. And so I'm uh, working on you know how do we how do we reach out to the rest of the world and talk to them about the great things that uh, Internet Explorer is doing and and really have a focus on standards based web. Okay. So uh, recently I've been doing a lot of things with the F12 developer tools, uh, WebGL, uh, pointer events. Pointer events. If you haven't heard, pointer events are awesome because uh, you know you've got your mouse and then. Um, well, that's it. Now, fingers can sometimes behave like mice, um, but guess what? There's 25% of new PCs that are being sold are touch, and so, uh, so you know. And then there are also um, all these kind of devices, and, and these are all touch, uh, as well, you know, as well as all the tablets that are that are being shipped. And so, touch is becoming a far more important thing. So people treat touch like a mouse, but it's not because that's much thicker. That is uh, a more prone to gesture, so a little flick gesture is a lot more uh, interesting. You know, um, a long press will give you a right click. There's, there's a whole bunch of things that the fingers do, and then there's like pinch and zoom, and there's rotation, and all the stuff that the mouse just doesn't capture. Well, guess what? There's also pen, which is another type of input, and that's an exciting type of input as well. Well, pointer events actually catch all of that and uh, cap uh, capture that in the browser, and you'll get events that you can react to, and it'll tell you what type of input it is. It'll tell you, like, on the pin, it'll tell you the rotation, it'll tell you the, the, the tilt, it'll tell you pressure, it'll tell you there's a whole incredible amount of, of, uh, of uh, metadata that come out of this, but 
you as a web developer, you only have to have to program for one set of events and you're done. Rather than trying to figure out mouse and then fall back to finger and then fall back to this and then fall back to that and the other thing and you know, so on and so forth. And it's future proof because we've got a whole bunch of different uh, events in the future. Um, the pointer events were originally uh, done in Internet Explorer. Uh, we submitted that to the W3C and in a land speed record it went from a uh, proposal to a, um, a candidate recommendation. And uh, Google's looking at this and um, uh, uh, Firefox is looking at this and you know we're working with a whole bunch of different people um, we actually did a uh, implementation for Chromium, so we know that it can physically work in other browsers and so on. Um, but Pointer Events is where it's at uh, with, uh, with touch interactions. That's one of the things I've been pushing and uh, working on very heavily. Uh, you know, I, I already said WebGL. There's a whole bunch of new things I'm working on with performance. Um, if you haven't uh, had a chance, go uh, go check out the build talks on performance, the web runtime performance. Uh, there's a guy named Tobin Titus who's done a, a fantastic job uh, putting together a talk on on how to use the web performance analyzer to go really deep. There's a whole. I mean. I could go on and on and on for hours and hours and hours. Um, but uh, what I'm going to say is, uh, look me up on joshholmes.com. And uh, you know, thanks to Frank's World, here we are. Thank you very much. Hi everyone. I am Akanksha Sharma. I am here for the summer at Microsoft from Harvard, so yeah, let me tell you about what we're doing here at Build. I'm gonna to talk to you about a challenge. Can I show you it to you? Great, okay, so this is a website that we developed. It says IE goes to 11. That's what we're doing, IE going to 11. And basically, it's a really cool way to get people to see what our new F12 developer tools are all about here, and also get you to check out modern.ie, which if you haven't heard of yet, Get with it guys, this is going to make your life so easy. So, you go to modern.ie and it scans your website and tells you exactly what's working and what's not. So, as you can see, this website that we built, doing pretty good. Check, 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 check. And these are problems that we know that you guys as devs are having. And then when it sees something that needs work, it has an exclamation point, you can click on it, and it tells you exactly what you should do to fix it. You can also see, like in this case, the missing CSS properties. Click on that, tells you literally exactly what to do and where the problem is. Then you can go back to the website, and then check out the developer tools by clicking F12. And you can go to where you need to go using that information and then edit it on the right hand side to fix it. So I'm not sure if you want me to do this right now, but I'll show you just in case. So the problem was the gradient container. This is pretty ugly. We don't like it. So we're going to go to container. Then we're going to go expand on it using the new tools. If I can click properly. Then the grading container, I'm going to click it, and over here you see that somebody's using WebKit. Don't do it, kids. Click on WebKit, you can edit out the WebKit, and then type in linear gradient, enter. Look at this beautiful website, all with using modern.ie. It's awesome. Tells you what to do and then fixing it using F12 developer tools. So guys, check it out. Check out IE11. Awesome. Do it. <laughs> oh. Really, it's not an artificial Windows. It has to be built on the Windows platform. And you have to understand that because there's so much subtlety and nuance about how that works and looks and feels. So the way text is rendered, the way touch interactions are handled, uh, the way suggestions are given with input text that to, to really have that Windows look and feel, be a Windows UI, uh, it needs to be on the Windows platform. In fact, people sometimes ask us, they say, hey, can we build a Windows UI you know, for some older versions of Windows or for some other platforms? And we don't think so. You know, we tried, and we actually made Windows 8.1 because we wanted to do more stuff with the look and feel of apps and the personality and the principles and the patterns and so forth that we couldn't do before. We had to update the platform to do those kinds of things. And took forward in Windows 8.1. That's the bulk of what we want to talk about today. Um, and it's in, the, in the following way, we're going, to, we're going to share this with you. Manita's going to tell you about how we're making the personality more visually rich and compelling, how we're moving forward in that personality terms. I'm going to talk a bit about the more scalable, flexible, and complete set of patterns that, that we're enabling in the system. 
uh, supporting. Uh, Lenita's going to remind us of the principles, which actually are unchanged. Uh, we're kind of grounded in those. And I'm going to uh, comment a bit, uh, wrapping up on how the platform supports this. Um, so, uh, without further ado, let's take it away. All right, thanks, Paul. Um, so, the first key is for personality. For Windows 8.1, our platform supports a much richer visual language. So, that design team looked at how we would want it to evolve our personality among the four key elements. We then worked closely with the engineering team to make sure that that design flexibility was built into the platform so we could really push the visual language forward in Windows 8.1. Uh, using the world's knowledge and creating, you know, what we call uh, NUIs or natural user interfaces, where your application can start to use things like voice and sound and vision in order to make your applications pop a little bit more in the marketplace. Because at the end of the day, we write applications so we can make money. And when you are able to use the, the Bing platform to truly differentiate your applications, that's when your application is going to go ahead and stand out. Tonight is the attendee party, so if you see me uh, around tonight with my camera, be sure to uh, stop by and say hello. Maybe you too can be on Frank's World TV. So without that, hopefully I'll see you again tomorrow uh, as we enter the third and final day of Build 2013. Thanks a lot. Kind of what you're... You know what the challenge is. Whatever you're. Who is who is watching this? So so far it's been developers. Oh gosh. 